Welcome to Polstroy. This is the Polstroy Daily Tech Tip. Today we're looking at the Cebu LKP30 wireless thermal printer. It's a nice printer. This is the larger of the models. It comes in a 2, 3 and 4 inch size. The good thing about this particular model is it takes a 80 by 80 roll, a half height roll. Um, but it does mean if you do run out of paper you can um, grab some out of a thermal printer and just roll some onto a standard cardboard centre and carry on. So to get this thing set up, um, you need to first of all configure it up to your wireless network. So to do that, you need to plug it into your computer. So it has a USB panel on the side here. You open up, it takes a standard micro and USB cable um, in here and you plug it into the computer. It will go through running the software to configure it, to put it on the wireless network. You just need to enter in the SSID, the IP address you want the device to have, the um, DNS and the gateway is so we'll cover that on the computer. Okay, so we're going to have a look at how to set up the Siru LKP30 Wi-Fi printer. Now this is a Wi-Fi printer, not a Bluetooth printer. So the differences there are, rather than the handheld talking directly to the printer, it talks to the router, and then the router talks to the printer. So the printer sits on the Wi-Fi network, uh, just like the handset does. And that means that the printer, in order to print, must uh, be in range of the Wi-Fi network. Uh, so if you take your handset and your printer out of the Wi-Fi network range, uh, you won't be able to print directly to it. However, that shouldn't be an issue here. So we'll have a quick look at the um, Siwu configuration tool. Um, there's a CD that comes with the LKP30 printer. I've thrown that into my disk drive and on that there is a utility folder. So we'll pop into the utility folder here and inside there we'll see a configuration tool. So we're just going to run that up and it looks like this. So the first thing we're going to do is um, have a look at the um, options on the screen. Uh, this is a generic configuration tool so it's got some Bluetooth settings if you happen to buy the Bluetooth version of the printer. Uh, we haven't, we've got the Wi-Fi version, so we're going to ignore everything on this screen. And instead we're going to come down here to where it says Start Wi-Fi Settings, and we're going to click on Wi-Fi Settings there. That brings us up with another Wi-Fi Settings dialog. So in this case, uh, as I showed you earlier, uh, we have the printer plugged into the USB port. So we're just going to pop down here and select USB. From there we can open the port. It will take a few seconds and then we can get the Wi-Fi information. Uh, in this case it will download that information from the printer and we'll have a look at what we have set up here. Um, as you can see we uh, have the SSID of the network configured here. So this was a little bit confusing for me when I first set it up. Um, I wasn't sure if the printer was running in ad hoc mode or in uh, infrastructure mode um, and that's actually a setting down here. So we want the printer to be in infrastructure mode. Uh, so first of all, we're going to set up the SSID. I've already done mine, Droid Air. And we set the IP address of the printer to be um, an IP address that is available on uh, that network. Uh, we can set the net mask to 255, 255, 255, uh, The gateway and the DNS server for that Wi-Fi network I, uh, addresses go in there. You can set the Wi-Fi mode to infrastructure. Uh, I haven't played with ad hoc mode, um, but you could potentially set it up as ad hoc um, if you wanted to use the printer outside of the Wi-Fi network. Uh, we're not covering that in this tutorial though, so we'll set it to infrastructure mode, set the Wi-Fi channel to whatever your Wi-Fi channel happens to be. You get that information off your Wi-Fi router. Um, I've set mine to 11. Uh, the Wi-Fi encryption for me is WPA and I have a shared key. From that, um, you can come out here to the WPA authentication and set the authentication to WPA PSK. In my case, I have set up a very temporary shared key for this demonstration uh, and you put the shared key in there. Once you've done all of that, you can save that Wi-Fi information back to your printer. It takes a few seconds to save. And once that write is complete, that's your printer configured. 
So the best way now to test it is to unplug it off the USB port and um, power it off and power it on while holding down the feed button and it will print out a docket uh, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, on the docket it should have all of those Wi-Fi settings configured. From there once the printer is turned on you can ping it and ping that IP address. So we'll have a look at that now. I'll just unplug this printer off from the USB port. We can close this uh, port here and exit out of here, exit out of this app and we can just check to make sure that we can ping the printer. So I'm going to run up a command prompt and we're just going to um, ping the IP address that I configured for my printer which was 192.168.0 0.192 and you can see here I'm now getting no reply from this printer so we'll um, have a quick look at that oh let's just try that again I think I went to sleep Uh, let me just have a look and see what my IP address on this machine here is. Config, because it's telling me that that address is unreachable. And I'm on... None of those. Oh yeah, I'm on 1.2.168.0.15. So I must have a different IP address. Okay, so once you have uploaded your configuration to your Siwu printer, we're just going to um, power it down and power it back up again. So you need to uh, just push the uh, power button on the printer, hold your finger down on it, and the printer will shut down. And then push the power button on it again until the blue battery lights come on and then the printer should be up and running on your network so you should be able to ping it so here we go ping 192.168.0.192 we're getting a reply from it that means the printer is on the network and is up and working correctly at this stage you don't need to install any print drivers um, on your PC unless of course you want to and you can then uh, print to your CWI printer from your um, from your computer but um, we don't need to do that it's on the network and we can then print to it from our handheld so we're going to have a look at how to configure up the POSDroid software to talk to our CWI printer and get it printing um, without any problems on the network okay we're going to have a look to see how we configure our POSDroid software to attach to our LKP30 printer it's pretty straightforward. We've um, already looked at how to put the printer on the network and from that printer we get an IP address. So all we do is we go into setup, we go down to preferences and we scroll down a little bit. Now this printer is a Wi-Fi printer, it is not a Bluetooth printer. So ignore the enable Bluetooth printing and the select blue bamboo printer options. Go straight down to enable Wi-Fi printing and we're just going to tick that box so it's green. From here we're going to go to Wi-Fi printer IP address and we're going to enter the IP address of our Wi-Fi printer. So we clear what's in there and we type in 192.168.192 again in my case. For your case you will use whatever IP address you set your printer up to. So don't use 192.168.0.192 unless you know your printer is, at, is actually at that IP address. Once you've got that configured, you can click Test Printer and it will print a little docket. So the docket that it prints is a series of numbers that go across the printer 
and let you know the printer width. So have a look at that docket, look at the numbers that go across it. In this case, mine has a set of 40, and then underneath it, there is, um, it goes up to 8. So my printer width is 48. So we can clear this and punch in 48 here. And that sets the printer width. The only other option you'll be interested in is auto print dockets. If you tick this, it means every time you send an order through to the kitchen, it will try and print a kitchen docket on your local printer. Now it will always print a MenuMate docket based on the way MenuMate is configured, but this just means that it will print a docket to your uh, Siwoo Wi-Fi printer hanging on your hip. This is important if you're going to give that docket to your customer for queue busting. So you might be out there servicing a couple of hundred customers with your handheld and a big crowd. You want to print a docket to your hip printer so you can give that docket to the customer so that they can either go up and pay or if they've paid on the handheld, go up and hand the docket over to collect their coffees, or food, beverages, etc. So that's a pretty good useful option to have. Once you've done all of that, you can um, exit out of the settings and you're ready to go. Mine will come up with wireless not connected because I'm on the emulator. You won't get that um, warning message there. Once you're set up ready to go, you'll need to have a look at the next tutorial which shows how you how to configure chip numbers on your handheld. So that when you do print a docket, it gets a nice chip number and we'll have a look at some of the features around that and also um, rapid ordering order by number and how to set that up with Office. So that's coming up in the next um, daily tech blog and um, we'll get to that as soon as it's done. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this uh, informative and useful. If you have any questions or queries, please flick an email through to support at posdroid.com. Cheers.